this is Shonen with more Warframe. And I believe I'm gonna jump right into a mission. Oh, solo. And mission three, Helleris. It's an extermination mission, which basically means that there is a set amount of enemies that you need to get rid of. And nothing more. As long as Lotus doesn't decide to change your mission objective. Now, I have all new weapons besides my Sentinel, and they are all unranked, and I don't mean unranked, unmodded. And my primary uh, is a shotgun, my secondary is a double pistol, and I have uh, dual wielding axes as my melee weapon. So as this mission type is fairly simple, I will mostly go about the guns. Now, the primary gun, uh, the shotgun, is a hack. And this is a fairly amazing shotgun. Uh, mainly for two reasons. The first one being that it has quite a lot of damage in it. Uh, <coughs> well. As I said, these are now unmodded. But as I leveled this rank 10, I noticed that when I have 30% armor piercing modded into this, which is a 5 energy mod, Skarks at 15% armor piercing and 4 energy. But when you get this weapon to rank 5 and have 30% of armor piercing, and when you do, this gun will two shot level 20 and 21 normal, normal as in these guys, and light grenier units as in the snipers and scorpions and such. And it doesn't take too long to get rid of the heavier units like the machine gunner. And yeah, uh, the other reason why this gun seems to be fairly amazing is the, the range, the effective range of this weapon. So as see, this clearly is a shotgun, but this works well in medium ranges as well as longer ranges. Let's see if I can demonstrate. Yeah, as you can see, not too much of a spread on this gun. If I had any kind of damage mod or armor piercing mod, which I would actually... If you face a lot of Grenier and Horpus with this gun, I would recommend leveling armor piercing, well, modding armor piercing first to this gun, as it's all you're gonna need for a while. It packs a lot of punch even without any any actual damage mods. Yeah. Uh, about the secondary, it's a Nat Volko, the dual wield version of the normal Volko. And this, instead of bullets, it fires small bolts, as the name might suggest. And they have a bit of flight time, so you need to consider that when you fire, especially when something's moving. But uh, these things have, because they are bolts, it has some amount of armor piercing built into the weapon. So even with the heavier armor of these enemies, I don't believe you should go crazy with armor piercing mods on this weapon. It might be more beneficial to just mod damage into it. These sound fairly beefy and the damage damage is good and the rate of fire is good. Oh and these actually have a polarity slot. Right at the uh, 
beginning. And the primary gun, the he shotgun, does not have a Polaris lock built into it, so you may need to spend a Forma or Q on it to make it a viable weapon for super late game. Which I ain't really on it that much about since I have yet to experience any of it. Now, uh, my new melee weapon. Oh, cool, that's full. The uh, dual Zorin. Kind of an ass thing. And while these do not do a lot, lot of damage up front, these things are fast, as you can see. And doesn't really impede me from walking, running around while I slash everywhere with these. They have a fairly wide hit art and as you can see this I'm spamming charge attacks now. So this is fairly fast in every respect. And I believe with uh, enough charge speed mods you and actually have like two charge attacks per second almost with these, which is kind of crazy. Sounds delicious, really. But uh, out of these three weapons, I'm most impressed with the shotgun, the hair. It's a whole lot of fun to use, and especially the fact that I can use it from afar, unlike uh, the Strun or the Boar shotguns which have a lot wider spread with the pellets, so that's something to certainly to consider when deciding on your shotgun. I haven't used the bore myself. I have used the strun and I leveled the strun to about rank 27 before selling it. It's a fairly decent weapon, but uh, nothing that I would really, really care to keep in my arsenal. Yeah. Let's see, three enemies left. See, a simple mission. Just heal a scarf. Well, simple if you find them all. My map seems to be in disagreement with me. Oh, I can go down. Right. This I didn't notice. T only one enemy hiding in, in his little hole here. Well. <coughs> no, no, that's not the way. I should be going over here, but it doesn't actually let me. Can I get there this way? No, no I can't. Uh, there's a trick, by the way, that you can do when you have the Duazoren. And slide and jump and do the slider cat. If you time it right, you can hover a lot of ground fairly fastly. Vastly. What the hell am I talking? Quickly. And especially if you're jumping down from a platform. It seems to work uh, really well. Really well. Oh, I didn't actually get him. See, one enemy left. He's this way. Somewhere. Oh, here we go. Boom! You, sir, are dead. Let's see if we can... Nope. No max there. And then it's a race to the finish. Simple, simple, simple. Open this. Back. And back. Infinity. Always useful. 
Energy, don't need any of that. And we are done. That was a look at the extermination missions and a few new weapons. I was gonna hold off doing this video until I have my new Warframe, the poison based Warframe called Saren. But uh, there's still some time left on the build. Uh, yeah. 13 and a half hours, roughly. So, yeah, wasn't gonna wait that long. It's been far too long since my last video, anyway. I will probably be using this frame in the next video. So you'll see what that's all about. But yeah, that was Warframe for today, and we will see each other again possibly later this week. Bye-bye.